Hey guys, this is the fourth video in the series on shareholders agreements. Today I'm going to talk about different uh, important clauses that should be included in shareholders agreement. Now, the most important clause that uh, should be included in uh, a shareholders agreement is an anti-dilution clause. This is what it looks like. It's very important to have this clause so that the company cannot issue shares to other shareholders or external third parties which will dilute okay, the shareholdings of current shareholders. So for example, a company without such a clause, a company can do what is called private placements, which is to uh, issue shares to third parties. Or the majority shareholders can also pass a resolution to uh, issue shares to a certain shareholder or uh, two shareholders so that their shareholdings in the companies increase to the detriment of another shareholder who did not participate in the, the issue of the shares. Such a clause should state that any increase in share capital or issue of securities that are convertible into shares, all existing shareholders have the right to subscribe for these additional shares or securities that are convertible into shares. The next clause that I'm going to talk about is the information rights clause. Such a clause gives shareholders the right to receive uh, monthly, quarterly, annual reports. Uh, the clause should also give shareholders the right to inspect documents belonging to the company at the company's office uh, subject to reasonable notice. Another very important clause to include in shareholders agreement is a dividend clause. This is to avoid disputes between shareholders on how much dividends. So for example, the dividend clause can state that a uh, dividend shall be paid uh, annually or semi-annually, uh, perhaps 50% of net profits. Or if the shareholders uh, prefer that the company have more retained earnings, they could have a lower percentage. For example, 20% of all net profits after tax to be uh, uh, given out as dividends to shareholders at the year end while the remaining 80% is uh, kept by in the company as retained earnings. Since we're on this topic, I should also talk about minority oppression. Sometimes a company can have uh, directors who are also shareholders, and because they have a majority of the shares, they hold a large, larger percentage, they uh, can pass resolutions to increase the, their remuneration as directors. For example, pay themselves huge bonuses, uh, pay themselves director's fees, pay themselves salaries. So it's important during the so it's important when drafting the shareholders agreement to include a clause uh, stating the re remuneration of the directors. Alternatively, you can put the, the directors basic re remuneration and provide in the reserve matter list that uh, any change in the director's remuneration has to be uh, subject to the approval of all shareholders of the company. Therefore, when you have this clause, the directors who are controlling shareholders cannot unilaterally pay themselves huge salaries and then to the detriment of minority shareholders who are left with very little dividends. An optional clause that can be included in the shareholders agreement is a deadlock clause. What is deadlock? Deadlock means the shareholders cannot agree on a reserve matter. The reserve matters is a list of uh, things that uh, the company cannot do unless uh, it has the consent of all the shareholders or the majority of shareholders. So for example, a reserve matter could be that the company cannot enter into a contract that is more than $1 million. So what happens if uh, the company wants to uh, enter into a contract that is more than $1 million and then 40% of the shareholders agree, 60% disagree. So there is a deadlock because there is no agreement for this reserve matter. What happens? If you don't include a deadlock clause, then the company simply cannot proceed with the reserve matter. Another common uh, reserve matter is change of company name. So if the company wants to change its name, some shareholders agree, some shareholders disagree. What happens if there's no deadlock clause? The company simply cannot change its name. So you can have a deadlock clause to provide that when there is a deadlock, one group of shareholders who don't agree buy out the other shareholders who agree to uh, one of the reserve matters. 
Examples of deadlock clauses include Russian roulette, also known as seal option, put option, call option. You can Google these. Uh, these are ways for shareholders to resolve their deadlock and to exit the company. Thanks for watching this video on important clauses to in shareholders' agreements.